Hey, what's going on guys? Mangleson here, bringing you another Destiny 2 video. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to begin in the Witch Queen and how the rest of the future seasons are gonna go in terms of gameplay loop. Now, there's some very notable things that you're gonna to wanna to know moving forward. Who's important, what to focus on leveling up, this year is packed full of games, so taking a break from Destiny 2 and returning can be a few days or a few months. But with all the information for the next few months are going to be here, and this will get you into a comfortable space to do in-game content, build crafting, and raid preparation. We're going to go over Void 3.0 and where to get aspects and fragments from, what are powerful drops, first things to do on the Witch Queen, what to avoid when leveling, and crafting materials in general. In this video, I will also be talking about Legendary Shard farming briefly before the actual video comes out. So keep watching to find out how you can get enough shards to give the Raul to get those ever so precious Ascendant Alloys. Now this sounds like a no brainer, but you're going to need to complete the Witch Queen campaign. Lots of things happen from week to week, new missions, new discoveries, but Destiny 2 is to be played week to week, not grind till I'm burnt out. If you miss a week, that's fine, but trying to finish everything in the last few weeks is almost impossible. If you like Destiny 2, then you will need to return week to week. In the new Void 3.0 update, you're going to see our core array for your skills. Once you get to a certain part of the game, that is. This is where you're going to get more abilities throughout your playthrough. While looking at your character, going over to the subclass tree area, you are going to inspect it using your triangle button or wide button or whatever it is on mouse and keyboard. This is going to bring up a menu so that you can respect your class and change the way your abilities work. If it's available, change that is. You see, when it's available for change, then you can be able to change it. Void 3.0 is the new updated subclass that now mimics the stasis subclass loadouts. This is going to be comprised of core abilities. Your super is on the left hand side. And when you hover over it, a branching set of various supers will be available to you. This is good for the future. Not only have they streamlined being able to change your super fairly easy, but have also added in an evolving screen that that way they can add or change in the future. So look forward to the Solar and Arc 3.0 updates in the future. But what you're going to need to understand here, if you're not too familiar with the Stasis subclass, is that things will be broken down into fragments and aspects. You'll need to equip aspects to gain more fragment slots. To put it simply, you'll need to read what that aspect does before you use a fragment. Your aspect could possibly do the very same thing that you're trying to put a fragment on for. They do not double stack, so if you're trying to do that, you can't. If something makes you go invisible, equipping something else that makes you go invisible at the same time won't make you go double invisible. This is not an explanation of Void 3.0, but it's just some words of wisdom. So you'll just need to figure out what you're trying to do with that subclass and do it well. Weaken everything, stay invisible, overshield your whole team, and buff damage. Make everything explode. So this this is the entry into the subclass changes the the rest of the light subclasses will be getting this treatment throughout the year so there will be a new normal by november december time frame icor array will have this for you the various fragments and aspects that is right the ones that you can't access until after the raid becomes available well the raid has already been completed so those locked aspect fragments that were locked before should be available to you now that means that after March 5th, which this video has been posted, after March 5th, 2022, you'll be going over to i Ray, and then you can purchase the rest of your fragments with Glimmer. And if you would like an explanation on the Void 3.0 subclass tree, let me know in the comment section below. After purchasing your fragments and abilities, i will ask you to bend the... <laughs> ask you. i Ray will ask you to bend the knee and meditate to receive your new power. Just like any other guardian, she can use all the subclasses at her disposal, but she is a Void Walker main. It only makes sense to pay respects to one of the greatest warlocks that have ever lived, so. Next, we're going to be talking about power, leveling up, and where to get powerful drops from. Getting powerful drops is the name of the game until you get to the hard cap. But first, you'll need to be at the soft cap, but then you'll go to the pinnacle cap after reaching the hard cap. I know, I know, but you want to play Destiny 2 
and you're gonna need to know these things if you want to keep up with the rest of the other guardians now during the video we're gonna be looking at our directory and we're going to go to the powerful drop locations located on the directory now you don't need to keep up with the video if it's going too fast you can always rewind the video or wait for the list to pop up during the video things are about to get explained and this complicated mess is going to make sense but just don't say I didn't warn you. So, while you look at the screen, or look at the screen and listen to me, or just listen to me, I'm going to explain what is the difference, what's going to happen here. I'm going to explain soft cap, hard cap, pinnacle cap, right? So, blue drops. Why are blue drops still in the game? Blues bring you to soft cap, all the way up to 1520. 1520 is a slog to get to if you're not doing the legendary campaign. But the first time you do legendary campaign, it'll get you all the way to 1520, right? And then if you do it with other characters, you'll go past that. You'll get 1523s, 1525s, 27s. You can eventually push yourself all the way to hard cap of 1550 by doing the legendary campaign with multiple characters or help out a friend, right? So if you're getting, during the legendary campaign, if you're getting 1520s and 15 30s or less than 1520s if you're doing it for the first time that's kind of how it's designed to do because it's little gates as it stops you from progressing over a certain limit but these gates are in place just so you don't over do the content i suppose like just mow through it the legendary campaign is a bit difficult by yourself now a powerful drop. A powerful drop will only raise your level by a few points. And this is going to be used to get you to the hard cap. So it's going to push you over 1520. So all the powerful drops are going to be pushing 1527s, 30s, 40s, all the way up to 1550. Now, once you reach 1550, common blues will drop at your level to keep your gear balanced so that your gear can always drop at a better level so if you're receiving blue drops that are at 1550 you're going to want to balance out your most used gear so that your better drops in the future when you get those pinnacle drops you'll be able to have a better pinnacle experience and you're not getting a pinnacle drop that's just going to push you slightly above your powerful level I know it does get confusing pinnacle powerfuls and soft caps but you don't have to infuse everything that you have just having it will count towards your overall level so don't burn through your upgrade modules but it's been about three weeks since this video is going to come out so knowing the destiny 2 community you probably already have run through your upgrade modules but they're not too difficult to get back so again doing a legendary campaign will get you a bunch of them on multiple characters or like i said helping out a friend so get in there help out a friend if you want an upgrade modules guide just let me know in the comment section below and that legendary shard video is already in the works but if you want the legendary shard video before the upgrade module video let me know in the comment section below and if you can hit the like button it really helps out the channel so what's the difference between the powerful and the pinnacles the pinnacles is the only way to get to the pinnacle power level right 1560 1560 this 1550 can get you into legendary lost sectors, but 1560 is going to get you into those master lost sectors, those ones high above. I don't know why they use legend and master. It's kind of confusing a little bit on which one's better, depending on what game you play. But only pinnacle drops will put you over that hard cap of 1550. After that, powerful drops will only be at your current power level. So if you go to 1552 and you get a powerful drop, that powerful drop will possibly drop at 1552. It's not going to drop above that. But once you reach 1560, even pinnacles won't go above that because that's as high as you can go without the artifact. The artifact gives you artificial levels, which will push you above 1560, right? So if you see that your level is inflated, you've probably leveled up so much that your artifact is giving you artificial inflation on your levels. And this is going to push you, like I said, to 1580 and above and all sorts of crazy stuff if you play the game long enough so at the very beginning of playing the game of playing destiny to the witch queen you can do whatever you want it doesn't really matter but if you're in like week three and you're still struggling to level up come back to this video remember blue drops soft cap 1520 hard cap 1550 pinnacle is 1560 right so 
If you're slowly leveling up, you may need to do more powerful things. If you're burning through your pinnacles really fast, then you may not reach that pinnacle power level because you're burning through them so fast. Some of the easiest content in the game has pinnacle drops, Gambit, Crucible, Vanguard, Strikes, Psyops, stuff like that. So the game pushes you into doing pinnacle activities before you're ready to use your pinnacle leveling. So it's intentional to gate you, I assume. So there's no way around that if you're just playing core activities of the game and you're just going through and trying to knock out your gambit, your crucible, and your vanguard strikes for the week because you're going to get a really powerful drop at that. And that's to make it easily accessible for regular or casual players of the game that if you don't know what you're doing when you're leveling up, then quickly, within a few hours of playing the game, you'll already be gating yourself off from reaching a higher threshold of reaching a higher power level because you've run out of pinnacle drops. And then people will be like, oh, why don't you do the raid? But if you're not a raider, you're not gonna do the raid. If you don't play Gambit, you're not gonna play Gambit. If you're not a Crucible main, you're not gonna play Crucible. You're just gonna stick to Vanguard Strikes, Night Falls, and be out of pinnacle drops and maybe do a few psyops missions or bounties that's going to get you that next pinnacle drop so just pay attention to what rewards you're getting at the end of activities and this is going to help you understand of why the game is limiting you because like i said the easier activities in the game get you the most rewards and iron banner is like the catch-up phase just to catch up with your power level so you do those bounties and get those powerful drops so Iron Banner is another way of getting massive pinnacle drops, but they're mainly going to be weapons because people are seeking out the weapons. So most of the drops that come with those tokens or those bounties or whatever, not the tokens, but the bounties that give pinnacle rewards for doing them, those are going to also be a little bit of a limiter too if you've run out of stuff to do you're on week three every three weeks iron banner comes back you're knocking those out knocking out pinnacles and you're just like oh i finally reached this pinnacle power level that this guy's been talking about but it took me three weeks to get there you would have reached it sooner if you knew that doing your powerful drops first and then doing your pinnacles would have gotten you to a higher threshold and having multiple characters helps too but not everyone has the time for that I'm a Destiny YouTuber and I barely have time to do three characters in the first place. So I can only imagine with everything else going on in life, trying to run three characters in Destiny 2 seems like a impossible task. It, it is it's almost an impossible task to run three characters. So there's just not enough time in the day. So just keep those things in mind. Don't sweat it, just play the game. Now, you remember when I was telling you that I was gonna be talking about legendary shard farming at the beginning of the video? Well, little quick caveat, in order to get Master Master Legendary Shards, you're gonna have to do an activity that's probably gonna drive you crazy, and PsyOps Battlegrounds is the new hotness for this season. For the next three months, well, we're almost out of month one, we only have one more week left in this month. So by the time this video is posted, it's going to be in the last week of the first month of three. Anyway, PsyOps Battlegrounds, you do a few of them, you get a reward, you get a chest at the end, right? I'm just going to explain it because there's not going to be a time chapter in the description below for this. But you do a few, you get things, you get a reward, you spend the psionic energy that you get, you'll get another drop. You're going to level this up week by week up until I want to say about five weeks until you get to the end because it keeps gating you that you're going to end up getting a lot of legendary equipment from there that you can break down into legendary shards. So Finch is the most important guy in the game because he correlates with the Psyops Battlegrounds, the little Witch Queen stuff, everything that's going to be done in the throne world. So level up Finch level 30 as quickly as possible. Get his gear. You can try to cheese the game if you want to with the YouTubers and the, the cheese and leveling them up, but just knock out Finch, level them up to 30 and continue on with your day. Now, getting into crafting. Crafting is a bit tricky because it's new to Destiny 2. There's things about crafting that aren't super cool or they're not, they're not good but crafting weapons is a good thing to the game. It's gonna iron itself out in time. But crafting weapons and attaching things to them. 
I think that once you craft something, unlock it and spend the materials, you should be able to go back to it and switch around as you want without constantly having to use crafting materials for it, but I digress. Anyway, after that little rant of the crafting, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to Mars, you're gonna go to the Enclave, you're gonna go to your crafting station and you're gonna have a limited amount of weapons to craft in here, right? You're gonna have the shape and the reshape tool. Now, reshaping a weapon is a weapon that you've already crafted to re quote unquote focus it, I suppose. Shaping a weapon gets crafted for the first time so that you can play with it, level it up, so that you're able to reshape it and make it better. So, just like we had in Destiny 1, where you had to use modes of light and level up the gun until you got to a certain point and figure out if you did or didn't like these certain attributes and thing in the game then this is almost the same thing just with a little bit more customization now understand this reshaping weapons and shaping weapons in the enclave these are weapons that are focused for this season but they're not main weapons that you use with the charge of light and the warm mind cells and stuff like that they do certain things in the game that only these weapons can do as far as leveling up but once you're able to craft Ikella's weapons and you're able to farm better weapons that work with more charge of flight war mind cell builds and well builds then we'll have a better set of things here but right now i think they're just ironing out the wrinkles of crafting with this little caveat of what you can and can't do now reshaping a weapon it has to be unlocked and it has to not be equipped because it counts as like a drop towards yourself once you reshape it now you're going to be needing certain materials in order to reshape the weapon and if you hover over to the end you're going to see the totality or the total cost of how much that's going to cost once you input all your little nodes in here for your intrinsic traits your passive traits your barrel perks your magazine perks and your special exotic catalyst and whatnot with the Ostrostrega. that's in reference to the Ostrostrega. now you'll need neutral elements you'll be needing other types of elements and this can all be pulled from a weapon that you level up now you may get an option once or twice to pull one of two elements if you're using a specific weapon and you know which route you're going to take go into the enclave go to your crafting board look at the perks that you're trying to get and pull those specific elements out now if you have the weapon in the way that you want to and before you use an enhanced trait there's always a weaker trait below that that you can equip onto the weapon in order to test it out to see how it'll work before you want to go full blown into using an intrinsic trait that's a bit better because it's going to cost an ascendant alloy which you don't get many of bungie's trying to fix it but it's not perfect just yet so if you don't know where your materials are like oh how much of this material do i have so i know i'm not over pulling well there's no clean way to see how much of a material you have until you go here to the enclave and look at it it's not the best design and hopefully they'll fix it in the future to where we can see our crafting materials and how much that we have so we're not blindly pulling other elements into our resource pool and we have already 300 of the argent element or any other type of element that we need for a weapon a crafting is a bit it's a bit dull but if you craft the perfect weapon and you're playing with it enough you're going to love the weapon in the end so use a weapon you like to turn into a weapon that you love the glaives aren't particularly good you can collect them anyway but I digress with that because it has used the Enigma for a really long time just to be like, oh, this is a new glaive. So, but the Enigma's not the best. Not even the exotic glaives are the best. But a collector of collectors, if you're going to want it, you're going to want to get it. So, I guess there's that. One day, glaives will be powerful, but they don't work with a lot of things because the glaives are considered projectile melees and not actual melees, so they don't stack with certain things. They don't want you to go a full blown melee build in this game for some reason because I think they're scared of bosses blowing up to melee damage because melee strike pretty fast. So, I mean, they did nerf one two punch in the advanced version of it for a minute because it was blowing up bosses with million points of damage. So, there's that good 
balance of why does this act this way and it's because we will break the game and they don't want that to happen now going back to leveling up finch you're going to want to do stuff in the throne world that's going to level up finch the most going around opening up chests doing activities for him completing his bounties it's just all this the catch-all for finch you're gonna go up to him he's gonna have the armors he's gonna have the bounties he's gonna have some unlocks for doing things for his particular quests which as you level him up extremely slowly then you'll be able to have access to the other functions that Fitch has. He gives out a little upgrade modules and stuff like that, but his Throne World weapons are not bad. To say the least, the new Witch Queen campaign dropping and the crafting and all that is good, but it's not great yet. But in time, everything will balance out to be better. So Destiny 2's community is a patient community. And when we get the proper updates, we do like the updates. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If this video has helped you out, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. And I will see you in the next one.